Good morning, my name is Adam Alalui and today we're going to talk about leadership uh, uh, qualities. I'm assuming that you have already downloaded the uh, workbook from our uh, website futuresme.ie. futuresme.eu. Leo Tolstoy says something very interesting. He said, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. And I think this is becoming key to leadership development. Changing of ourselves at the same time of the change in the world. Or changing of ourselves at the same time that we are changing the, the, the company. What is the uh, purpose of leadership? The purpose of leadership is basically personal and collective transformation. In other words, personal and collective transformation must happen hand in hand. We have to be in this quadrant that these two are going in parallel. No whole can survive without its vital parts, and no parts can survive without the coherence of the whole. In other words, the part and the whole, the part and the whole are interdependent. It's like a cell in human body. Health of the cell contributes to health of the body. Health of the body contributes uh, to health of the uh, cell, and we cannot uh, separate them. In the same list with the us and within our environment. We affect the environment and also deeply affected by environment. Therefore, these two have to go hand in hand. If you remember, we talked about our uh, framework for transformation. We said that we have to have thinking together. We spoke about it in the previous uh, videos on how to think together, big seven and collaborative decision making. And we said out of that comes visual strategy or plans. And uh, the outcome of the visual strategy will be used to act together. In other words, we ex execute the actions and then we get the uh, uh, output of the acting together becomes the results. And then we reflect on the results on both internal and external re reality and then we learn. And as we go through this process of uh, acting, thinking and doing things together, we grow and we develop. Basically, as we go around, our learning improves us, our results uh, improve, and become better and better. What is the center of this? Because when we have this transformation and we have this framework, it has to revolve, our, uh, it has to revolve around something. What is this that we have to revolve around? And that is the true leadership. In this process, we need four capabilities. We need managerial capabilities. We need strategic capabilities, we need to build our uh, operational capabilities, and also we need to build our adaptive capabilities. And these adaptive capabilities, as a result of those building the other three capabilities, and make us become adaptive and move with the, with the time uh, forward. We're going to have a look at this moral leadership, or the core of the leadership quality of this, this uh, process. Leadership levels happens at the four different levels. Leadership qualities in the core and the first level, which is about personal leadership. Uh, we cannot lead other people, we cannot lead ourselves. Then we go on to interpersonal leadership, which call it collaborative decision making. This is when we think together with other people, we act with unity, and also we collaborate in decision making process, uh, etc. Then we go into managerial capability, which basically about creating a strong workplace. And uh, the final one is about organizational capabilities, which through the strategic capability we achieve that and also we have to build our operational capabilities which is about improve process improvement and process management and combination of these will give us the learning that, that, that we require. How do we see the world? There's a lovely story of a farmer and a, and a traveler. There was this uh, farmer doing his work and this traveler arrived and the, the traveler asked this farmer, and the farmer was a very, far, a very wise farmer, uh, asked the traveler, asked the farmer, what kind of people live in your village? Farmer, being a wise farmer, asked the traveler, traveler, what kind of people live in your previous village? The traveler said they were not very nice people. They were very nasty, they were very unkind, they were not helpful, and I didn't like them at all. Therefore, I um, decided to move to the next uh, village. The farmer said to the traveler that, uh, you know something? People in the next village are much better, and here are hundred times worse. Go to the next village. Therefore, the traveler was great, grateful, went to his next village, and some time later, a second traveler arrived. 
This time the traveler asks the same question from the farmer and farmer asks the same question from traveler. What kind of people lived in a previous uh, village? In this time the traveler said they're very kind people, very nice, very helpful, but the traveling salesman have to move from village to village and uh, that's why I decided to see if it's a nice place to stay. In this time the traveler said, you know something, people here are hundred times better than your previous village. This is a place for you to stay. The moral of the story is, no amount of organization is going to solve the inner problem. Therefore, it says, ultimately, all the battle of life is within the individual. No amount of organization can solve the inner problems or produce or pre prevent, as the case may be, victory or failure at the crucial uh, moment. We have to really look inside and outside, like a tree that whatever goes above the ground has to also grow beyond, beyond the ground. There is a beautiful uh, analogy in a book, I think, called The Eighth Habit by Steve Covey. He says, imagine you have two, you have two surgeons in your, in, your, uh, in your town. One of them is an extremely nice guy, very good character, very trustworthy character, but he's not very good at what he does. However, there is another uh, uh, surgeon in the, in the town. He's not a very trustworthy per, uh, per person. He's only after uh, your money and nothing else. But he's very knowledgeable, very skillful, and very talented. Which one do you go to? Of course, majority of the people go to him, and one or two people go there, and actually all lose out. Because people go to him, they may not come alive, and people go to him, they will have an operation that they, they didn't need. Therefore, really, the key is to be here. We need both. We need a character and we need competence. And these two have to go hand in hand. And this will create a trustworthy person. In the same way, we need exactly the same thing at a high trust company and competent company to create a high trust organization. And these two are in parallel. Let's talk about the character for a second and see what do we mean by character. If you have a look at the values, there are two kinds of values. There are moral values and non-moral values. What's the difference? The difference is that moral values carry obligations, non-moral values don't carry obligations. For example, non-moral value, if I like uh, classic music, I cannot expect other people to like it, or I cannot impose it, and I don't feel obligated. However, if uh, I'm a dishonest person, or uh, you know, I, people can expect me to be honest, and also I feel obligated to be honest, then we're going to leave the non-moral uh, uh, values out of this, and we stick to the moral values, and have a look at what kind of moral values we have. There are two kinds of moral values. Universal moral values and non-universal moral values. We leave the non-universal moral values out. We stick to the universal moral values. No matter what uh, background, what color, what country we come from, these are universally accepted throughout the world. And these are qualities like justice, truthfulness, honesty, respect, courage, truthfulness, uh, responsibility, generosity, trustworthiness, etc., etc. Therefore, character is defined in this context the total sum of our universal moral values that determine our behavior. In other words, putting all those things in, within me, inside me, that is my uh, uh, character. We're leaving their personality, etc., out of this for a time being. Now, interesting, they did some research and uh, they asked students, how many of you think that cheating is wrong? In these schools, they put a tremendous amount of emphasis on character development. Without exception, everybody put their hands up that uh, they think cheating is wrong. What did tell, tell the researchers? They said you realize that the students know the values at the head level. Therefore, therefore, they knew the values, value knowing. Then they asked the second question. How many of you don't want to cheat? In this case, about 80% of the students put their hands up. Basically, that shows that they had feeling for values, and they wanted to do it, but probably they were not fully implementing it. Then they asked the last questions. The last question was, how many of you actually don't cheat? And then in this time, only 20% of the students put their hands up. And this shows value doing, values doing. They do the values. Common wisdom says that we, we judge ourselves at this level, level of intention. However, we judge other people at this level, value of the way people behave and they, they, they demonstrate. Our children, Judge us at this level, people reporting to us, and other people, colleagues, etc., uh, judge us at this level. That the key for one of the keys for uh, leadership development is that our words and actions should, should, should agree. Otherwise, we lose credibility, we lose integrity. How do we improve this? 
through self-reflection, but continue to reflect our action and continue to read the inner reality and try to improve it and do go through this personal uh, uh, transformation. Other things that we usually do through uh, our workshops in uh, future SME programs, uh, the transformation programs, through scenarios, etc. We look at the uh, leadership qualities. We just spoke about the character. We go about responsibility, commitment, security, initiative, self-discipline, focus, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and vision. Also, going the higher level, which, uh, the training of the leaders must develop those qualities that lead to consensus and collaboration rather than command and control. In other words, Build on this one goes the second stage, which is the interpersonal relationship, which talks about the, uh, the collaborative decision making that we speak in another video. I'd like to finish this uh, part by this quotation, which says, above all else, leaders for the next generation must be motivated by sincere desire to serve the entire community and must understand that leadership is a responsibility, not a part to a privilege. For too long, leadership has been understood by both leaders and followers as the accession of control over others. Indeed, this age demands a new definition of leadership and a new type of leader. They must be committed and guided by principles. I hope you enjoyed this session and we hope we'll see you in one of our workshops to go through this leadership development together. Thank you very much and bye-bye.